Hi everybody, this video is looking at something called autosomal linkage. So what do we mean by linkage? Uh, linkage just means that the genes that we're interested in are found on the same chromosome. The autosomal part means we're talking about the body cells and not the sex cells. So this is not sex linkage. So if we think about um, looking at the inheritance of two genes, so first of all we've got gene A and we've got gene A on one chromosome, so here's our homologous pair of chromosomes and then we'd say gene B is on a separate chromosome. So in this case gene A and gene B are not linked. That means that they can be inherited independently but linkage is where we would have gene A and B on the same chromosome. That means that this allele and this allele will have to be inherited together. And this allele and this allele for these two different genes will have to be inherited together. Okay, so if we are looking at the inheritance of genes then on the same chromosome, that's going to affect our phenotype ratios. So if we start off with an example where we've got a heterozygous individual, so this individual is heterozygous for these two genes, gene A and gene B, uh, and we're going to cross it with an individual which is homozygous recessive for both of these genes. If we look at how these genes are laid out, now first of all we're going to look as if they are not linked, and then we're going to make a comparison. So if they're not linked, just as we've looked at before, we can see that our uh, genes for A and B are on two separate chromosomes, and therefore, if we then work out um, what the gametes would be, we first of all would have to think, well, independent assortment can happen. So gene B, the chromosome here, they've lined up in the opposite orientation. And that means that when we make our gametes, we've got four different gamete combinations of our alleles. With our homozygous recessive individual, because we've only got uh, one allele, one version of each gene, then there's only one possible gamete that we could have. So again, remember, this is not linkage. We're just going to compare this with what happens in linkage in a second. So if we do a Punnett square very quickly, just to find out what our ratios would be. So we'll just go through this quite quickly. So putting our gametes on there and then working out the genotypes of our offspring and remembering that our offspring has to have four alleles, two for each gene. Now, in this example, I'm just going to say that we've got colours to represent uh, the, the different genes and what they code for. So our gene A is green, and if it's got a capital, the dominant gives a darker, sorry, red, gives a darker red. So there's gene A, we've got a capital there, we've got a capital, that's the dominant allele, so we have a darker red, and therefore if we have the recessive, we're going to get a lighter pinky red colour. Gene B is green, so capital B gives us the dominant colour, the darker colour, and then the homozygous recessive have a lighter colour. So we can see we've got four different genotypes and four different phenotypes when our two genes are not linked together. Okay, so let's see how this is different and what changes if we introduce the idea of linkage. So we say that instead of these two genes being on two different chromosomes and therefore independent assortment can happen, what if they're on the same chromosome? So the first thing is that we actually write our genotype slightly differently. The brackets tell us that these two genes are on the same chromosome um, and we can see that we've got the dominant version of each allele on the same chromosome for this individual. And then in brackets, we'd have the small chromosomes, uh, sorry, the small allele letters to represent the recessive alleles. So this is the genotype. The brackets show us which alleles are linked together. So that means we need to do the same thing here. So we can see now what we've done is we've just changed it. So we're showing that the, these two alleles are on the same chromosome. The genes here are on the same chromosome. And that means that this can't happen. We 
we cannot have these alleles lining up in this orientation because they're not on a separate chromosome. They're on the same chromosome, they're linked together. And that means we can't have this gamete combination and we can't have this gamete combination. The only combination of alleles we can have in gametes is big A, big B, because they're on the same chromosome, and that's what we see here. Little a, little b on the same chromosome, and that's what we see here. So we'll just rub those out so it's not confusing. If we do the same thing with our other individual, so we've got our brackets to show that we've got linked genes on the same chromosome, and then let's make our diagram also show that they're on the same chromosome. Now, because this individual is homozygous for both genes, there's only one possible genotype. So actually, we don't get any change in this example. This is still the same gamete that we, we had before. So if we think about this, we've now got two possible gametes from this parent instead of when we had four before when their genes weren't linked. And we've got this gamete from this parent. So that means that our Punnett square is going to look different. We have to get rid of these gametes. They don't exist anymore, which means that these genotypes for the offspring are not possible. And therefore, those phenotypes for these offspring are not possible. So our question was, how does linkage affect the phenotype ratios? Well, you can see that we've now only got two possible phenotypes in our offspring as a result of those genes being linked on the same chromosome. Okay, that explains linkage. That's all. Thanks.